See with your eyes that I have labored little and found myself much rest. The Lord gave me a tongue as my reward, and I will praise him with it. When you praise the Lord, exalt him as much as you can, for he will surpass even that. When you exalt him, put forth all your strength, and do not grow weary, for you cannot praise him enough. For the Lord has made all things, and to the godly he has granted wisdom. He has ordained the splendors of his wisdom, and he is from everlasting to everlasting. Nothing can be added or taken away, and he needs no one to be his counselor. No evil will befall the man who fears the Lord. But in trial he will deliver him again and again. All men are from the ground, and Adam was created of the dust. Good is the opposite of evil, and life the opposite of death. So the sinner is the opposite of the godly. Excel in all that you do, Bring no stain upon your honor. Guard yourself in every act, for this is the keeping of the commandments. self is my self-image. Therefore, my only self can reflect only its own image. Would it be possible to stand in front of a mirror and reflect another's image? For if we see another, we are ignorant of our true self. Ignorance is another name for forgetfulness or sin. If I see myself as powerful and dominant, I shall act in this way. For thought acts on revelation. We reveal what we see. Seeing is the mirror's reflection of what we believe. We see through our mind's eye and not the physical eye. There never was a physical world, for God is in spirit and God created all. If God never created a physical man, instead God breathed and the dust of the earth swept ignorance into a cloud of evil or error while error is no part of God. Then we have become forgetful or ignorant of God should we believe we are the cloud of dust. Yet we breathe, and breathing is omnipresent, and only that which is omnipresent is of God. Breath, awareness, presence. Evil or error exists to bring God's creation, his children in the omniscient mind of God, into self-actualized individualizations of God's thought towards itself. God sent his word and the word became the flesh. Jesus died in the flesh to have eternal life. You are the prodigal son on this journey. God's thoughts expressed as his words. Into a world of dust where moths and rust consume to die to the crucifixion 
the origin of crucifixion deriving from cruci, a severe test or a trial, and fiction, that which is invented or imagined in the mind. The soul imagines reasoning or human error. These are the thoughts of men. And as you know, God tests the spirits. The spirits are the thoughts of men. You see the whole truth and nothing but the truth is this. You are an idea in the mind of God, eternally in spirit, like you recall in the movie The Matrix. And you came into the world of the five senses, the ego mind, and the betrayal of the soul, Satan, which is the source of so-called human reasoning, idolatry, confusion, error, sin, where you enter the burden of carrying your cross to the crucifixion. Now pay attention. You were, are, always will be God's perfect manifestation, man. Man is God's perfect manifestation in the mind of God. You are God's image and likeness in the present. You are atoned when you praise God from the heart that seeks its source. Out of the heart derive the issues of life. Tempted by the serpent, by the knowledge of good and evil, as in God the good in spirit, and man the evil in dust and matter. The spirits, or the thoughts of men, are tested by God to find them worthy and appealing, or in need of chastening and crucifixion. When life becomes a severe test or trial by that which is invented of little men or imagined by a reasoning soul, stemming from a belief in mortality, superstitial, material fiction, the fire that refines the soul is the suffering. The suffering is when you are bound captive in the middle place or the middle kingdom, the labyrinth of the human mind. We are only bound by ignorance and forgetfulness. Paul discovered that he was blameless and sinless when he cast off the old man whom he never was, never could be, since God never created anything unlike itself. The dust of ignorance takes shape in the cloud of sin, meaning it obstructs the sight of God's ultimate beingness, being all there is, ever was, or will be, eternally present. The cloud obstructing man's view is when man takes thought for his own life, reasoning in sin consciousness, and this all stems from human error or a belief in two powers, God and something else. This idea that there is something else is the thorn in human consciousness. Forgetfulness enters through the belief in two powers. It is the fear that comes after the broken heart. 
Fear is thinking, worrying, taking thought for a so-called life outside of God and God's infinite order. And the broken heart is the heart that turns itself away from God and towards reasoning into forgetfulness. And the ignorance binds the soul in the middle place or the middle kingdom, the human erring mind, rooted in fiction, mortality, sin, sickness, disease, and death, will soon become the constant companions. Let's now correct the mind by recognizing omniscience, one mind, God's mind. There is nothing else outside of all that is, or all that is could not be all that is. You see clearly now that by taking no thought for your life, you restore knowing what God knows about itself. This is the laying down of your life for Jesus' sake, where you cease to exist as a fiction, as in the dust of the earth that returns to dust, the Adam dream of consciousness. For that never had a root, and everything which emerged out of it including all its supposed intelligence is a mere mockery to God. It all began when fear entered after the broken heart. The indicator that you are bound in the middle place is when life becomes a burden and the fire of God's cleansing the suffering is leading you into surrender. What is there to surrender to other than God itself? The fear or the incessant thinking that attempts to reason for its own existence, well-being and life has no root. It is not and therefore always leads to suffering and the purpose of suffering is to lead us into repentance turning back to God what is suffering and repentance through the cross God is removing the ignorance from its own reflection like wiping away a cloud of smoke in front of its mirror creation. The purpose of tithing in all three kingdoms. We know the angel Malachi, verse 3, 10, says to bring ye the whole tithe into the storehouse. When you bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, you are walking into another dimension. God's provision, protection, and promotion of your life. It is when the smoke is being cleared with all of its reasoning and torment. As you know, you've heard me say, the 666 is the who, what, where, when, why, and how. These are the six degrees of separation where God in manifestation enters the world of the Adam dream of consciousness. This is the separation in the three kingdoms, the inner, the realm of spirit, where all that is exists. The middle place, the middle kingdom, is the mind. If it takes thought for its own life, 
it is a mortal based error. There is only one mind, God's mind. The outer kingdom is the reflection, the mirror that we perceive. And if we perceive anything other than God's perfection, we need to correct the middle kingdom. Since omniscient means one mind, God's mind, which knows only good thoughts about itself. Fear-based thinking through the six degrees of separation, the 666, the fall of man into the Adam dream of consciousness, as in God in man, the son of man, becomes man in the five senses. This is a fallen state of manifestation error, fiction, temporal, unreal, illusion, dream of Adam, and Adam was born of the dust of the earth. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. By removing ourselves with the six degrees of separation, we remain bound in the middle place in ignorance or forgetfulness. When we cease engaging with the six degrees of separation, we remain present to the present. Therefore, the smoke is cleared and God promises to pour us out a blessing so much so that we cannot contain it. Why is the money or the coin of the realm so important? The money or the coin of the realm is to be sacrificed up to God's profit. The man of God or the God manifestation invoking your faith. Someone who has become learned or is understanding, standing under the blessing. This is what it is called being anointed. The anointed one shows you the path. The anointed one is God's messenger. And the purpose of God's messenger is to create a faith bond with you. In other words, you connect together to the anointing. Faith is the bridge to the incorruptible. The purpose of the physical tithe is to connect together in a faith bond with the man of God or the manifestation of God on the earth plane who is reaching out to you to build your faith in God. The journey of tithing begins in the illusion of the outer kingdom. Little man believes in a physical system where our work, our labor, our intelligence, our substance of materiality, our achievements come from our own doing. Remember fear as in thinking in six degrees is what broke our heart connection. Our heart was engineered to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness so all these things could be added unto us by God, not to take the burden on our own shoulders. The Adam dream of consciousness is a perversion or living backwards. Spell the word live backwards and it is evil. 
This is the consciousness of self-sufficiency based on human reasoning. The principle is that what we hold in our human hand, as in all of your resources that you've attained through all of your hard work, effort, energy, desires, all of the things of value that you've stored up in your five sense reality are the result of all of your human reasoning. When you give up what you're holding in your hand, God gives up what he is holding in his hand. You are exchanging one for the other. What we receive in this world of illusion is our compensation or the sustenance it takes to survive in the world. You have used all your reasoning to acquire your wealth. Fortunately for you, this day is rich with blessings because you are not it and God is. God left us a secret doorway out of the Babylonian system of debt-based slave consciousness. A way to come out from that system of ignorance and suffering the forgetfulness that brings repentance and makes us turn back to God. How we do it is that we take what's valuable. Since human mortals store their treasure in the world, this means they put all their affections into their earthly compensation and the means by which they attain it. We call it money. By surrendering the tithe offering of 10%, considered holy money, God gave his creation the free will to remain under his covenant or be swept into forgetfulness in the Adam dream of consciousness. God created a covenant with his manifestation, his creation. Remember, we are an idea in the mind of God, never engineered to be self-sufficient. The word covenant means a covering where the stream flows. If you step outside of the covenant, you have the free will to lean on your own understanding your lying eyes and other five senses, all your five senses are your understanding and the five senses know nothing of God. These senses instead attach to the knowledge of the world. Satan was given the entire world as the prince of the material consciousness of man. Satan tempts you anytime you take thought for your life considering who, what, where, why, when, and how, the six degrees of separation, thereby taking thought for an individual life that never existed. For the life you are taking thought for, the material fiction self does not exist. It is rooted in ignorance and forgetfulness, which has no basis in reality. It is little man, the shadow of truth, evil. When you put faith in your fear, or the incessant thinking about your life, deriving from the reasoning five senses. You are reasoning for your so-called life, and the wages of this sin are death and destruction. You perceive lack, limitation, and a host of perversions that God never created 
when you lean on your own understanding. The way out to escape, to leave the Babylonian system, is to step into the covenant. It must be done through the heart. All issues in life are from the heart. With a merry and cheerful heart that praises God, you become atoned, or at one. And God can never be praised enough. If your heart is seeking first His kingdom in spirit, and putting at least 10% the tithe of your free will towards leaning into His wisdom, presence without thought taking, and making a sacrifice, meaning a holy or sacred performance. You see, you have a performance contract, the covenant of Jacob. When you do this, then God does this next. That's how the contract works. Tithing is the only part of the Bible where God is saying, test me. God knows all of the perceived struggle that you endure when you are swept away in forgetfulness or ignorance of God. Everything is known to God. God knew your mortal struggle of trying to make ends meet before you were thought in the mind of God. And this refinement of his children in wisdom is the truth. You are here to reveal the truth of your being. And if you do, you shall surely never feel the sting of death. Everything that is true has a fallen twin, a shadow that is untrue or error. This is how the word entered the duality or fallen state of man and was risen as the Christ in wisdom. Jesus the man was not the Christ. Jesus the Messiah is God's word that reaches his son of man. Son meaning descendant of man meaning manifestation. The son of man is the descendant of God manifest. You see what the manifest witnessing its own perfection is the Christ, it's the son of man. The revelation that he, the word, descended and manifestation already is. It is his presence revealed. Would it not therefore make better use of your time to sacrifice it to receive more of his presence? Time is always in the past and future outside of the now. It is ignorance and forgetfulness masquerading as the evolution of life in a shadow consciousness. It is the error pretending to be real, the domain of the human mind, which finds itself always outside the present, in ignorance and forgetfulness. For what is, is eternal life, and what is not, is a temporal reality, the dust to dust. And ignorance is the only causal factor which could reason that man's sustenance is descending from his employer, skills, spouse, business, age, or anything else implying being outside of God's provision. You cannot add anything to creation. You reveal it when you are not outside of the present laboring in the mind in the illusion of the five senses.
When you are in the mind in time, you are living inside the ignorance, the forgetfulness, in the labyrinth of the human mind, which knows no end to its insanity. The human mind is always in fear or resistance, trying to think about everything as if it can create. It has no root unless it is aligned with wisdom and refined in God's presence. The human mind cannot create, it can only reveal what already is. Omniscience, the one mind, has already poured out the full blessing. All human thinking is resistance and fear. It obstructs the perfect view of God in man, God in manifestation. God revealing itself to itself is the only motivation for God to move in thought, which means your life. You are an idea in the mind of God. Your life is engineered to be God's thought about itself, and the specifications call for you to seek and praise God in manifestation to be the good in man or the God in manifestation. Since you are the word of God sent into the world of the erring five senses, ignorance and forgetfulness, in order to become the son of man or the descendant of manifestation itself, you must first purify your heart. To purify your heart is to remove the desire for reasoning over your so-called human existence, for you never had a human existence, by which to derive any reasoning that was creative. God has already created all that is, and therefore reasoning to the contrary is living backwards or evil, and evil destroys evil. Hence the end of little man who lives in his five senses. Little man in five sense reality is cursed and lives under a curse according to the prophet angel Malachi. He must restore the perfection of God's idea of man by surrendering up what is not for what is, trading in his picture of faith in his resources to reveal God's resources by moving faith from fear, thinking and worrying, to trust in God. Blessed is he who believes without seeing, for his is the kingdom of God. Many who can't reason, they can live on 90%. When they assume they can't live on 100%, believing for their limitation, they unwittingly place their faith in their own understanding, what they see, hear, taste, touch, smell, and their incessant thinking and feelings derive from who, what, where, when, why, and how. This is the sinful consciousness of ignorance. The faith of their hearts is in their ignorance, in forgetfulness and the reasoning that accompanies it. This is the curse that little man lives under. Men that are from the earth, from dust to dust, in a material consciousness, are living under a curse, cursed corrupted and cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. When you bring the whole tithe in all its manifest forms, meaning whatever appears to be the sustenance of your existence, money, goods, 
whatever your human reasoning has decided the lust of its affection is bringing that into the storehouse surrendering up what is not for what is praising God is how you become atoned do you not think God knows the desires of your heart you become more like God and less like the ignorance from the Luciferian matrix world and its five sense Adam dream of consciousness your self image is the source of your prosperity you are created in the image and likeness of God and therefore wisdom is the path to the highest self image where you atone yourself as one you do this by the faith act of praising the Most High and making the sacrificial offering up to God in exchange for the windows of heaven to be poured out into your experience you gain more of the one mind that is bold as a lion as you drop the ego vanities in the temporal illusion of the coin of the realm the invention of little man in all of his understanding and you restore that's what it means to store up in a storehouse to restore God's divine government justice love and life in all three kingdoms it's quite simple you praise God to become atoned you cease fearing any condition to honor him with trust and you speak what God knows to be true about itself this is done by knowing his word and when you remain still as in taking no thought and not adding any more fear or resistance you are surrendering to God's infinite order and recognizing that only the good is true thereby activating the force of faith on your behalf to make the bridge to the incorruptible Be warned, but be not afraid. Error will attack you, and you should count it all as nothing. Remain in peace. Trust in God's undeniable good, remembering that the five senses know nothing about God. This is being in the world, but not of it, and overcoming the world, as Jesus the Messiah came to teach do not take ignorance and forgetfulness seriously when it attacks you I repeat do not take ignorance and forgetfulness seriously when it attacks you lest you will place your faith in the pulpit of Satan on the cares of this world God knows the desires of your heart and will provide them he is the true cause of all good and the only source of lasting and permanent wealth in all its forms and manifestations your faith in good or God is the only proof that your heart is seeking first the kingdom and leaning not on your own understanding your behavior demonstrates where you are placing your faith faith in God is what restores you to his perfection faith in God is the bringing into the storehouse what you bring and who you bring it to is where your affection lies are you making a faith bond with the man of God 
or the manifestation of more good being revealed in the motive behind your offering? If so, you are doing the will of God to be revealed as more good in its own creation. Are you bringing the best and the most sacred offering? Or are you bringing the least and fearing the worst? Watch your motives, for your motives are not hidden to God. The seed exposes the soil and bears fruit of its own kind. If you bring God time, you will manifest His presence. This is the only time God knows. God's presence is the full filling of your true heart's desire. Remember, your heart is engineered to seek God, and God's promise is that all these things shall be added unto you. If you bring God money, you manifest His provision, as in His vision is always for more good. Since it takes all of your time, energy, and talent to produce your money according to your five cents reasoning, God births expectation of increase inside of you as you tithe. He must increase you to increase His good through you. This is felt as the expectation you begin feeling immediately after you have planted your faith seed. As a caution, again, do not mock God. God knows the motive behind your giving of plenty, as in, do you trust Him? Or giving of little, fear, distrust in Him, only the 10% is required, but God is only pleased by faith in Him and nothing short of this. Like legalistic thinking, which is nothing more than the ego mocking God. Only faith will be accepted as a worthy sacrifice. If you bring God praise, you manifest His attention. Like any child, Seeking our father-mother's attention is inherently wired in us. The ego distorts these impulses in adulterated thinking, turning them into addictions. And the solution out of these false idols or false cravings or the affections of false desire is to restore our heart pursuit praise of God and deny the five sense mortal fiction reality that brings about the lusts of the flesh for you never had such an existence if you reveal more of god's nature in your experience you become less like his non-nature which is sin sickness disease poverty and death this is what more of God and less of me means. It means quite simply, yield to the higher potential that is inherently present in your being by sacrificing error for truth. You cannot have a powerful self-image of a self that never existed. Any attempt at an ego-derived self-image is bound in time and duality, which means it inevitably brings destruction. The pleasures of the five senses are hardwired to self-destruct. Evil destroys evil, and the only evil on the planet is ignorance of God and God's all-encompassing and eternal one mind, one power, one presence. Outside of God, there is nothing that exists. Ignorance has no root, so basing our self-image in something which lacks a root 
is merely trading in one form of suffering for another. We've merely moved into another temptation that leads to the same destruction. We instead reveal ourselves as the perfect idea of God in manifestation, children of the Most High, who are descendants of the manifest will of God. So what is the will of God? We know that Jesus the Christ taught the 12 disciples or disciplines, meaning God's will was to emerge in his man or manifestation as the 12 fruits of the Spirit. Charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith, modesty, self-control, and chastity. By tithing in all three kingdoms, we become more of God and demonstrate more of these disciplines. Our steps are ordered and our attainments are permanent, satisfying and rooted in eternal life, revealing that heaven is at hand right here and right now. Low self-esteem is a product of the lusts of the flesh, which are originating from a belief in two powers, good and evil, or spirit and matter. If you start from a corrupt position of believing in matter, the lusts of the flesh will be your alibis, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. These are the accumulation of judgments or offenses. They are shadows cast which culminate into a belief in low self-esteem from a human mind rooted in material reality in a fiction Adam dream of consciousness that judges itself and is bound in the middle place where ignorance and forgetfulness remain. The key to high self-esteem is to remove the lie and begin from a place of truth, of incorruptibility, eternal life, as God is all in all, which means you are that expression in that image and that likeness. You never had a life of your own. You never left heaven. You never existed as a physical being, not for one second. You never had to take worry in the form of rational thought based upon false conclusions outside of the Word of God. Anything that is not of God's nature is outside of God, therefore it has no root, and its temptation should not be taken seriously. It should be rejected immediately. Since wisdom removes the idea that there could ever be any ounce of low self-esteem, instead being of high esteem, we aim our praise back at the source of all good. Then we reveal what is good and diminish what is unholy and untrue. This is not the same as trading in one form of suffering for another. This is casting off the old man and restoring the kingdom of heaven as the only reality that exists, which to the contrary, there can be no opposing power or existence. God is all in all. So therefore, being present and atoned with God is to know that God never created any man with low self-esteem or disapproval of itself. All impressions and such beliefs are fears made manifest because of ignorance and forgetfulness, the knowledge of this world where the superstition of materiality is binding those captive in the middle place. Let us remember God never created anything unlike itself, and ignorance of God may present a temptation 
of such belief, but it appears as a mortal dream and bears no root. We simply need to restore God's high esteem in our consciousness and life is made good or more of God revealed in us again. So step out of your suffering and step into wisdom. Decide right now who you are. Are you eternally in spirit with God, incorruptible and perfect? Or are you in a time-bound, body-conscious, material reality that is subject to all the evils of this world and its false reasoning? Your power is in your decision. My only self-image is my self-image of God's expression in the image and likeness in spirit. Spiritual, never material, at one with God, incorruptible, indestructible, immortal, inherently good, already fulfilled of all desire, always pouring forth the fruits of the Spirit and revealing more of God's good, expanding and multiplying itself in my experience, always now and never fearing anything unlike itself as there is no root or power outside of all that is. Selah.